Welcome everybody to Letter Now, a podcast where we nurture the handlettering masters of tomorrow, today. My name is Martina Flor, I'm a lettering artist, author and educator, and today we are going to talk about motivation and self-sabotage. We will speak about how to stay motivated, even through hard times. We will touch on comparing yourself to others, you know that feeling of um, you know, looking at others and feeling that they are doing much better than you are. Um, and we are going to be touching on the question, do we have to be motivated all the time? Is motivation a rule or an exception? And for this, I have my friend Stefan Kunz here with me. Stefan is a talented lettering artist and I want you to introduce yourself next, Stefan. But I want to say that I love how you describe your work in one line on your website, which is bringing my imagination to life on paper and beyond. So hello, Steph. <laughs> Would you like to introduce Hi. yourself? It, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so I, do, I love that. Look. Do you describe your, your work this way? Or how do you see that? <laughs> um, I'm not even sure if the quotes or the the sentence came from my agents my agents at that time uh, or if i said it but one thing that i definitely use more to describe my work is like i create to inspire others um so that's kind of like inspirational inspirational encouraging uh lettering to inspire and encourage others that's amazing um so i invited you to discuss uh, today's topic because i feel that I feel that your work has a lot to do with that in one way or the other. You know, you often letter quotes that have to do with motivation um, even your Instagram posts or the things you do on your YouTube channel have to do a lot with that. Um, sort of like grab a pencil and create or things like stop overthinking. So all this good stuff that has, has to do with keeping others motivated, right? Um, so I would put I will put the link of your website on the show notes and your Instagram and YouTube for those that don't know your work um, so that you can actually see what I'm what I'm talking about here. Um, but see how you, often you speak about the topic makes me wonder whether you yourself struggle with motivation and, you know, stay motivated and self-sabotage. Yeah, all the time. Um, one other thing that I really do struggle with a lot is kind of like keeping myself motivated and and I always tell people like I believe that everyone's creative um, and whoever tells me they're not they have creative excuses and so in other words they are creative and I'm really good at coming up with creative excuses so I know how to um, to find a way not to do something and if like if there's anybody better than me then let me know but I feel like I'm I'm the king of finding up excuses so that's why I know when I hear one that I can go against it and I I feel like I also have been gifted uh, the the talent of encouraging and inspiring others or just encouraging others and so that's why I try to use that superpower to my advantage and to to really push people in a good way to to really help them achieve their full potential and and that comes at the expense that sometimes i'm not motivated and when i'm not motivated like i cannot motivate others and so it's kind of like this um this evil circle where you're just going backwards and and for me that's been kind of like one of the key cornerstones in my work that i create um or the things that i focus on so one is it needs to be encouraging um, like I love business so entrepreneurial it needs to have something around cr being creative so doing something with your hands with your creativity coming up with something like creating something new and then finally uh, the last one is man now I, I took them in the wrong order which means the last one is excelling at something so I need to get really good at something so whether it's latte art it's uh, lettering it's photography it's it's filmmaking it's all these different areas like I want to get be become one of the best at that um, if I can like I usually do not scrape like the top three but I like to be like the highest up that I can be and so I like to be in the 10% of the best uh, if, if possible that's amazing. So you have those those goals that you're after, right? So when so you... I'd, I wouldn't necessarily put them into goals, but it's like whenever I need to find like a new pursuit, um, 
whenever it hits those four uh, four criteria, then I know that I'm on to something that I can do long term. So, mm. for example, lettering kind of like lend itself to all of these four. Like lettering is creative, so I'm creating something new. Mm. Um, two, it's something that I can excel at, so I need to get better at at doing that. I can always improve myself. Then three, I can build a business around it so I can make money, I can monetize it, um, I can come up with products, I can like have a demand for, for clients, I can negotiate deals and all of that. And, and finally, I can in inspire and encourage people by writing quotes that are like inspirational, encouraging. And so all of those four things, I found them in lettering. And when I moved to photography, it covers three of those, but the inspirational part, the encouraging, like how to encourage somebody else. Well, you might do that by telling stories instead of like just taking a picture of something. Like if you just see a picture, it might not just encourage you. But if you hear the story behind the picture, that might be inspirational. And so it's kind of fine. Like, how do you get all of those four in? And I believe that everybody has three or four pillars that they are really um, that they really feel like this actually defines my work. And whenever you have something that you have been doing for a long time, then you have found your four pillars and so you can identify them. But if you can't right now, then always ask yourself that question. Like if you're not happy with what you're doing right now, like what is it that you really enjoy about it? And kind of like define like, is it being creative? Well, then one of your pillars needs to be something creative. like creating something. Maybe it's just doing the whole business side of things. And so you're just inspired by doing that, or you're just interested by the technicality, by doing something very precise, detailed. And so finding out those things really helps you to define whether or not you're going the right direction or not. Yeah, that's, those are good hints. But I think also that it, going back to the beginning of uh, what you just said, finding something that you really like is actually key to actually stay motivated right yep. um understanding that this is actually you want to excel at and this is something mm -hmm. you really appreciate and um yeah and you want to get better at right mm -hmm. so um we will move on to our questions because as you know this is a listener driven show so we are here to answer questions from the audience we are at service here sort of um so we'll be answering to voice messages you can you listening to us right now, you can send us your voice message with questions and comments by simply going to martineflor.com slash voice message, or you can email your recording to um, podcast at martineflor.com. So let's listen to the first voice message from Jocelyn. Good morning, Martina. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so excited to listen to your new project. My question for this episode will be how do you get those like the motivation to keep on going when sometimes you just lack of it for weeks? How do you get back on the horse again? And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Well, that's a great question, Jocelyn. <laughs> I am in that rut right now. And and probably one of the things that we artists all go through and doesn't matter whether you're um, like amateur professional if you do that for a living or not um, like these creative blocks or just these motivational slumps that you have um, I have them every now and then like more than you would think uh, right now I've been actually in one for two weeks uh, I just talked to Martina about it before we started the episode and one of the things I know is like you it, you always will get out of it it's just a question of time um, a friend of mine actually kind of like was in a relationship or just like was about to start a relationship and it did, that didn't work out. And to get over that person took him like two months. And, and so now after having gone through all of that with him, I, I told him like, all right, you see, it took about two months to kind of like let that go. And you just need to give yourself time. Mm -hmm. And when you observe yourself, like take away, like step out and, and really look from a bird's eye view of your life and how your slumps are, like journaling that in helps you to kind of keep track of those things, um, is to then look up and see, all right, how long did the last one take? And, and then finding out like, what can you do in those slumps? Um, so one thing that I try to do is one, get some rest because usually I'm really bad at taking rest, taking breaks. Um, so for example, last week, 
the first thing I did was actually just to not go to work um, between like Wednesday and, and Friday, so on. And, and even this week, just, all right, it's going to be a slow week. So I'm just going to try to do what I need to do. Um, set like one goal instead of three goals or five goals a day. Um, and and you, like, instead of trying to do too much, just try to do a little and just do that. And then always ask yourself that question, like what helps you to still achieve those goals? Like what step do you need to take? Like right now, you're, the distance you're walking every single day is shorter than the usual amount that you're walking. So think of that as well when you're in the slump is like, all right, which direction am I going? And if you do all of these things, you realize that you're still headed in the right direction. It's just slower and that's okay. Like you don't need to compare yourself to your speed to anyone else's. And then again, it's just know that you will come back to a time where you're going to be super productive. Like I've had the same thing at the beginning of the year. I was super slow, very unproductive. And then suddenly I had a project that I could bite my teeth in. And once I was in that project, so I was building up a course, uh, online course uh, around 3D lettering. And, and so I spent weeks and weeks and weeks on, on writing down the, the, the content of the course on, on creating the promotion side of everything. And so often that helps you to then just go through it. Like I have other friends who are studying right now who just need to go through, like learn for these exams. And, and that's why it's super important to just have also those projects where you just need to bite your teeth in and just get through them. Yeah. And that, I think that's so important also to you know, kind of understand what is waiting for you down the road. Like, why why do you want to get back on the horse again, Jocelyn, right? Um, what is what is there waiting for you, right? What, what is the reason? What is, like, the ultimate goal behind it? Um, so is that, you know, is that a better, you know, getting better at your craft? Is that excelling at something? Is that, you know, being recognized by, by peers? What is it? What is it that you're after? right um what is your ultimate goal like how does it look to actually be done or get there you know um and i feel that also having this motive you call it motivation slumps um so having this these moments of being feeling a little bit down or feeling that you don't you don't feel like producing something um i think they are also part of the journey, right? You need to have these mm -hmm. slow moments to have those high peaks, right? Mm -hmm. You need to just go down to be able to go uphill, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say like, try to embrace those. And I think the, the hints that you just gave, um, um, Stefan, I think these are really like healthy ways of uh, dealing with that. Hey, I'm not motivated enough to to work right now and that's totally fine. I can take it easy and I can get some rest or I, as you said, try to do uh, less than I used to, um, but kind of embrace the fact that, you know, being, you always need the two sides of something. You need, always need mm -hmm. the white to, to understand what's black, right? So you mm -hmm. also need those moments of being unmotivated to sort of be, you know, experience those moments where you're like in the flow, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is this is actually something that happens to all of us. I, I have the feeling that there is the the understanding right now that we we need to be constantly producing. And um, I feel that's so detrimental for us creatives because we are so connected with the work we do. And when we are not producing, we feel that we are failures, sort of. Um, and something that you, I think you mentioned in the very beginning, or I think you mentioned before we started the, the episode, that this, this constant uh, thing of being comparing yourself to others, I think, um, sort of increments this feeling, right? Like when you're not, like when you're, when you're having these down moments where you're not so motivated to create and you go on Instagram and you kind of check on other people and you see that they are thriving or, you know, mm. apparently they are thriving. Um, then you sort of start feeling like, Hey, what am I doing wrong? Like, um, is this just me that, you know, I'm just, not good enough to stay myself mm -hmm. motivated all the time. Um, how do you deal with that, with the, with the feeling of like, you know, comparing yourself to others and this exposure that we have 
to mm -hmm. other people's life, which is actually not like a real representation of their true life, right? What we show on on social networks is not necessarily um, the reflection of our um, yeah, no, private not. life, right? The the thing that social media did really well is like it brought up really a lot of great stuff, um, like beautiful content, wonderful creation. Like it it pushed us like to do more and to to even get better. What it also did, and that's the negative side, it's also brought like the top people, like the best in the world that suddenly you see always on your feed. Like if you TikTok is even worse in that regard. Um, with Instagram, you choose who you want to follow and you see their work. And usually you will choose like some of the best people you can find. But on TikTok, you will get like promoted the best pieces that people create, like the funniest, the most uh, interesting, most captivating art pieces. And so you're just seeing like the cream, like the, the top, like the sugar coating of everything. And so you're high on that sugar, you're high on, on just that feeling. And when, when you stop, you're left with like, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to create that. And, and you can always see that as a motivator to see yourself push, but often enough, it's a bad motivation to do that in the first place. Like it's an extrinsic motivation. So it comes from externally. Um, or you can use it to, to boost yourself up. Like it's like yourself, you're like, all right, like I love what they did. And I kind of like, like you look at it from the perspective of like, how can I learn from that instead of just how can I be like that? Hmm. Um, and taking like other sides. But it's really true that one of the things, especially when you're in a slump, social media is, 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 a, is a terrible, um, like what, what would be, um, like it's, it's adding like salt it exacerbates to the wound. it, right? Yeah. yeah, like it's, it, it just makes everything worse because you're just seeing like everybody else succeed and, and you're already having self-pity with yourself because you're like, oh, like I wish I was that way or I could do this and I wish I would be creative right now. And so it just makes you like feel worse about yourself. But now that you realize like, all right, I, I feel down, I don't feel motivated at all, like social media won't bring that motivation in. So you got to ask yourself, like, what brings that motivation in? Like, yeah. is it reading a book? Like, is it reading new ideas? Is it going uh, on a walk and just like trying to pick up two objects that are <clears throat> never meant to be together, but you feel like, hey, you know what? What about a rock and a piece of uh, a leaf that I found on the ground? Like, how can I bring those two pieces together? Yeah. And and out of a, it's it sounds so artistic and I hate myself just like talking like that because like the the way it's like, when it comes out of yourself, when you start to creating out of yourself, out of a, a place of you just like curiosity, seeing like what, what, is, what happens if I start drawing on a rock? Um, what, is, what happens when I start like just using what I have in my studio and just using it in a different way than I've done before? Like what you do when you look at social media is like, how can I recreate what that other person did? Oh, yeah. Um, and so one of the last examples was... Um, I was looking through Instagram and I saw Gemma Bryan uh, posting old stuff, old work. And one of them was like something very colorful and beautiful. And, and I was just like, whoa, this is amazing. Showed it to a couple of friends who were just around me. And, and then just later on, like I know um, Zhao uh, Neves um, posted that picture as well on his story. And it's like, she's out of this world, uh, what she does. And then we're like, yeah, like, we're building up a case why Gemma O'Brien is superhuman and, and not necessarily in, in our world. Um, and it's funny, but it, it just shows like I wanted at that moment create something similar because I was just so blown away by what she created. And and so that's where like you got to ask yourself, like, is it helping you really to look at that work? Because all that you're going to do is to create something similar instead of going out and trying to create something that comes naturally out of you. So like I said, like one thing that comes naturally out of me is like inspiration. Like I want to encourage people. And so my question is always like, well, she does like single words, like how can I do that? But then I, I forget like, no, like I need to find quotes, phrases, words that will help and trigger people to be more inspired, be like, oh, you know what? That just helped me so much. Thank you. Now I have a push again. 
And so that's why I also feel like the value that people should get from looking or following me on Instagram is always that when they go on social media, they're not hit with this depressive, like, oh, this is so amazing. Like, I hope it's amazing. But at the same time, I just hope that they can read the text and be like, you know what? That's awesome. I'll create something. I, I won't let my perfectionism get in the way. That's so important because I think something, I just wrote something out of what you said, like, which is, which has to do with what's inside you, right? And not like creating from what's inside you and not the other way around, trying to uh, create from kind of looking at what others do, right? Mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, I, I feel so connected to that. I feel that I personally feel, and I think I, I spoke about this in the first episode where I presented the podcast, which I think that, I think that, you know, um, excelling at your craft or getting better at your craft or having a, a focus on a certain craft at all is a, is a really good way to get to know, know yourself better and get to understand what you're good at and what you, you know, what you struggle with. Like we all go through these questions and, and concerns and challenges, right? And I think that embracing that process or embracing those, those challenges or th things that come along the way have to do with, you know, understanding how to deal with yourself better and how to get, you know, yourself better. So I feel that creating is also a way of getting to know yourself better. And if you, if you, if you look inside what you just said, like if you look inside you and it, this sounds like super spiritual and it might be, but who cares? Like, um, looking for what's inside you and what you have to say to the world, right? The stories you have to tell. Um, I think it's a it's a much more healthy way of approaching creation than actually comparing yourself to others and seeing what is there, you know, what is out there that I can do myself, right? So we can move on to the next question. Um, I think we have another yeah yeah there, there was this one thing like about i just want to say one thing why i hate what what i said like like what comes out of you because i sound like a um an art teacher and and i never liked my art teachers because they were just like so so vague and just like well you use the color green because it represents this and that and i'm like yeah no i'm using green because that's kind of like what grass looks like um but <laughs> I think Chanel Martin, or uh, I'm not remembering her name right, but she's an artist out of Chantel New York. Martin, yeah. um, Chantel. Chantel, yeah. Yeah. So she said something really, really well, and I think I remember it from her, was that once you are drawing so fast that you don't have time to think, that's when you will produce your most authentic work. And that's kind of crazy, is because when you work so fast that you can't think, like you will automatically create what comes naturally out of you. And, and I find that so beautiful because when we think too much, we kind of overthink stuff and we kind of like stop ourselves in the tracks or we create the things that we look at other ways around. But when you have to draw super fast, like if I just like would hold up a gun to your head and tell you to draw me a house, then that's kind of the way you would draw a house. And that's kind of like fast. It's like, simple it's it's an expression of yourself and and i really hate myself sounding so artistic um but but it's really true that you need to discover like the the thing that comes from it within you and and not to be a copy of somebody else's work and i'm probably one of the biggest person that does that but um that that looks at other people's work and like tries to take something from that like i try to get inspired from it and then just see how i can embody that into my own body of work i love that um let's move on to the second voice message i think this is from an anonymous listener let's hear that hi there martina and stefan you guys are both amazing lettering artists you guys are like people that I always get inspired um seeing on Instagram and your guys's work um I had a question regarding to not self sabotage your creativity and your own health when is there a deadline before the actual deadline do you guys create a routine um and if so can you guys give a little bit of your creative routine 
that way you give yourself a healthy break without feeling pressured of the deadline. Um, thank you so much. I hope you guys are having a great day. Love you from Los Angeles. I love that you're, you know, you're speaking about being healthy with, uh, you know, being healthy yourself. Um, I think one question that comes to my mind when I hear this is like, um, I think it a lot of times comes down to defining what enough or when enough is enough, right? Because I think you're speaking about like, um, when do you give yourself a break and when, when do you actually know it's enough? Uh, and when do you put yourself a deadline um, and say, okay, that's it. That's as, as good as it could get in the time given or in the time frame that I assigned for this specific task, right? Um, because, you know, the truth is that it will never be done. Um, I, you know, I look myself at, at work that I have done last week and I know that there's room for improvement there. I know I look at things that I did three years ago and I see so many things that I would do differently today, right? But I think um, it's so important to sort of um, have those steps done so that you can look at them from another perspective later on and say like, hey, I can do that much better today. And this gives you some sort of um, feeling of um, progress, right? Like the feeling that you are actually getting better. How do you see this? Yeah, the, the deadline thing is, is, is a real thing. I've always set myself a deadline for from like whatever I create. I usually want to be done in the in the same day. So whatever I created back then for Instagram that like came out of the 100 day creative challenge mostly was to create and finish something, upload something to Instagram at the end of every single day. Um, and so there were a lot of days that were just terrible. Again, we're going back to Chantal um, with the create something so fast that you don't have time to think. I was creating so much and being so productive over 100 days, that's a lot that I didn't have time to think of what I would create next. Like it just had to, whatever came into the flow of my mind, like I just had to produce it because I didn't have the luxury of trying to figure out something else. And putting that work out there, still to this day, I can look back over those 100 days and those are probably the, the work that I created, the most inspiring work that I can look back on because I tried out so many different things. I kept yeah. on pushing myself on doing other things. And and to this day, I still have kind of in my mind this, this limit of like, it's got to be done in a day. Mm. So even when I think of a mural, unfortunately, it needs to be often done in a day. And so that's also a, a problem. Like it's stopping me from creating like more exciting work that's going to be produced over weeks and, and months. And so when I saw again, going back to that example of Jim O'Brien's work, like she, she painted a mural that was just again, out of this world. Um, I'm just giving a lot of uh, high fives to, to, to Gemma here, but she, what she did, like I, now you don't know that when you just see the piece, like in my mind, it was like created in a day. And when I looked at it and I saw her post and thankfully she wrote it, it was like, well, I went to Portland to paint that thing for a couple of weeks. We weren't able to finish. It came back a couple of months later and we finished it over another two weeks. And so it took like a month to make. And I'm like, whoa, mm. it took a month to paint. Yeah, you have to go I'll through that, right? Piece. Exactly. And so she creates these ex like galleries and exhibitions and, and all this work is like, like takes time. And so her body of art or body of work, better said, um, is is so much slower than what mm. I produce. Like I can look at my pieces and usually my Instagram posts are all different pieces. And I like, I just came out in April out of a 30 day Bible lettering challenge where I created one piece every single day mm. and streamed that online. And so in that time I create a lot of pieces and I'm fast, I'm, I'm efficient. But one thing that I'm lacking is kind of like this endurance to do something over a longer time to work and, and get into the intricate details because I'm just getting bored too fast. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's something that I need to learn and I need to do. And going back to the question, one thing that like to stay healthy, what is super important is always to ask yourself, like, are you giving, did you give your best today? 
and your best does look looks always different from every other day. So today, for example, I um, like I came back from from another city uh, this morning. So went back straight to the office, str jumped straight to the podcast interview with Martina. And and then uh, this afternoon, I've got a couple other things and I have an appointment later on. So what can I do in that day will look different from a day like yesterday where I had a lot more time um, and but maybe less energy. And so always ask yourself at the end of the day, like, did I give my best and not did I accomplish all the things that I wanted to? And also not like, like, did you just slack and you know you slack because like you didn't give more. And so for me, often enough, like I just need to pull down the level of like of what I want to have as an output. And so that helps me to find like what is healthy and what is good. And so being gracious to myself in that season as well. Um, but at the same time, again, having deadlines, like using those times, like you, you said that at the beginning of the episode, like the, the contrast between white and black is what really gives the whole thing meaning is you cannot draw on a piece of paper with a white pencil on, on like, then it all will just be white. So it's the black stroke of the pencil that will give that piece, art piece of meaning. And so if you start to balance out those two things really well and place them at the right spot, you will create something that's very beautiful. And so with your balances between having highs and lows, understanding like, well, what are the lows actually good for, for my life? And how can I use them in a really beautiful way? So those lows will give your good times also a lot of meaning. And, and being able to balance those out. And for some people, it will look like those lows will take on much longer. But if you, in your mind, will tell yourself like that's bad, like being in a low is bad, then you will think of that as, as, as such. But as soon as you think of, you know, my lows are, are there too, to also give my highs meaning, because my highs will then be so much more meaningful and and I can then also use that time to just prepare myself for that high, for that moment when everything comes back again uh, and so on. So if your business, for example, doesn't go well right now, like that's OK, like prepare yourself in that time to be excited for what's to come, because that other part, that other season, the end of the tunnel will come again. It might look different from what you expect to, but it's going to be there. Steph, I would like to give this listener um, a tool. I have different tools and this is this one is a worksheet that is called Three Steps to Create. Um, so to become better at your craft, you must produce work consistently. That's why I created this worksheet because one, once you understand the three necessary steps, you will stop procrastinating and finally get hands-on. So you can go to martinaflor.com slash create now. Um, hopefully that will help you and also will help you answering that question. Um, so now we're moving towards our inspirational quote time is a section of our show. Um, you know, we all love quotes, uh, especially hand lettering artists, because we can letter them. Um, and in this section, we do our best to answer questions from our listeners on social media with a quote. So that's a little bit of a challenge, Steph. Um, so we later put these quotes um, on our show notes so that listeners can letter them and share them on social media. So if you do so, just tag me and I will share that um, as well. So Steph, the truth is that here we will actually you know, talk about it for a while. We will rumble around uh, until we, um, each one of us finds something that looks like a quote. So if you don't, don't worry, we will just put that together afterwards so it looks nice and we can put it on the show notes. Um, so here's the first question. I think we're going to go through two questions here. The first question is from Tambi. How to stay motivated in the pandemic? Mm. Mm. So, yeah, difficult times. Um, I would say that... Um, Something you can do during this time is to actually focus on possibility rather than scarcity. I feel that most of the things we're exposed to right now have to do with the downside of things and you can really easily get into this, um, this cycle of like listening to the news and, and reading the news and seeing how, you know, 
numbers are going ha um, up and um, you can really go into this cycle of like focusing on the downsides um, or you can actually focus on possibilities. Actually, I was speaking about this with um, some of my some of the students in my, in my coaching program. We were, you know, we were discussing like, how do you find work opportunities during the pandemic, right? And I was speaking about the fact that there is opportunities are out there right now. The thing is that opportunities are shifting somewhere else and you need to sort of find where these opportunities are, right? But the opportunities don't disappear all of a sudden, right? Um, so they're actually shifting to other places and the key or the... You know, you need to keep your eyes open sort of to see where these opportunities are going, right? And sort of focusing on those instead of focusing on the lack side of things. So I think like my kind of like my um, my quote here will be like focus on possibility rather than scarcity. Nice. If that makes sense. I will take I will take your uh, opportunity thing and say like you know what create your own opportunities. Yeah. Because the the pandemic has brought us something that we've never had before, a change that everybody was faced with that we had to go through now to, all together. And for pretty much everyone I know, it took something away that they enjoyed. Um, it'd be just going out to a coffee, sitting in. And, and drawing there, um, it's, it's traveling, it's, I don't know, seeing your friends, being able to do like uh, sports outdoors or wh whatever. There's some aspect of your life that has been changed by it that you are not happy with. And, and with that comes a whole different approach on how you want to do things. So either you let that define you and just be angry at that, or you decide like, you know what? This gives me an opportunity that I've never had before. For example, for me, it was that I, I love traveling and I can't wait to get back to it. Uh, I love flying. I love stepping onto a plane and just go away. And because I did it so much, I had a freaking flyer pass so I could like go into lounges and enjoy all the fun parts of that too. Now, losing all of that. And so it's like been pretty much two years that, well, one and a half years that I haven't been able to travel as extensively as I used to. Like just before March, before the pandemic started, like I traveled in the beginning of the year to India, to the Philippines and to London in just like one and a half months. And so it's kind of crazy to think like that all was taken away. Um, but for me, it was this, the, the thing that I realized, you know what? I've never had the opportunity to stay at one place for so long in the last six years uh, because I traveled so much in, in that time. And, and so for me, it's been like, you know what? This is an opportunity that I'm going to use to actually build up something right here to like use that time that I have to like get my body some rest. Like my body had a lot of trouble with adjusting to jet lag all the time. And so kind of hopefully getting a sleep schedule that is more consistent. So my body actually really benefited from that. And there are all these things that you can come up with. And so instead of like seeing the negative side of that, always think of like, hey, you know, I'm getting a chance that I probably will never get after. And so I'm going to be using that. And to going back to that quote, the create your own opportunities. Um, a lot of us, especially in the lettering world, had probably a lot of clients, like losing a lot of clients, client work. Um, and that probably went down for everyone. Like for me, it went down definitely by half, if not by three, uh, three thirds um or yeah three-fourths of of one and and so that's kind of like where i realized you know what i need to find other ways to monetize my business and until like my like until corona hit i've never thought that that would probably be a problem like i thought like you always gonna get work in it's always gonna be nice and so i had to think of like hey what else can i do i have a product that i'm selling i have courses that i'm teaching and even like my workshops got canceled and so i had to create my own opportunities and so i decided you know what i'm gonna create my my, my first online course and so i did that so that's nothing nothing very new i had that before but that's kind of like the first one i produced myself 
and I like Corona presented like an opportunity because suddenly the coolest location to shoot something were suddenly open for like for very like cheap. And I was able to shoot my my online course, the building letters and uh, composition masterclass in one of the coolest locations that I was or could think of. And the second thing was like doing like in person live things like I love teaching live classes and somehow I wasn't getting the chance and suddenly the boot camp idea of teaching a class every single week over the course of six weeks suddenly presented myself a awesome opportunity that I've never had before because well everybody's open now to it everybody knows zoom everybody knows how that works suddenly I was able to do classes from my own home um, don't have to travel anywhere don't have to like book hotels book flights um, plan like time in between like usually one workshop took me like four days to to plan out and so that's a lot of time that goes on to that and right now i can do a whole workshop out of the comfort of my own studio that is already all set up that i can teach to more students than i ever could before like i have 250 students in, in some classes that can jump online and join the whole thing plus i have it recorded they can watch it later on we do it every week so they have time to prepare and do um do their whole homework stuff and then you realize like suddenly the the opportunity you created out of something that was not so good or i won't say it wasn't so good it was just like it was unfortunate uh, in some ways presented like me a greater opportunity and so that's kind of like making the pivot the change to find something better that's when you create your own opportunity and how you can succeed at that as well. Yeah, that's uh, picking up on that, Tammy. I want to add another quote that I wrote right now is creativity is born with limitations or in limitations, right? So sometimes less is more. Um, you know, it, it, it happened often to me that when you know, the more limitations I have to do a project, the more creative I can get. And I think that happens in a lot of different disciplines. When you have some constraints to what you're creating is when you can really come up with really novel ideas, right? So that's why, like, for instance, briefings are so important when you start a project because you have some sort of limitation to what you can create. Otherwise, the world of possibilities is so big, right? So in these moments where the possibilities or it looks like possibilities are less, what can you do with the few tools you have around yourself? Um, you know, what can you do with the limitations you have and how can you create your own opportunities, as, as Stefan said? So another question here from Gypsy Cat. Where do you find a middle ground between comparing your work to others? Ah, interesting one. Um, so... I think here I wrote, I, I, I read it again. So where do you find a middle ground between comparing your work to others? So I think, you know, I think she is kind of focusing on like, how, how do you stop comparing yourself to others, right? Like how, how do you stop this, you know, this thing of like looking at what others are doing and feeling that you're a failure or that you're not good doing as well. Um, and I wrote something right here, um, which is, you know, I feel that, I feel that actually, you know, going back to what I, what I said in the beginning, that is, you know, doing something or focusing on a certain craft, it's a lot about finding your own way of doing stuff, right? So ultimately, the person you need to compare yourself to is yourself, right? And um, I think we were touching on this before, this, this idea of creating this, these instances of work that you can look back to and see if you're progressing in what you're doing. I think it's so important for us um, creatives or for us doing creative work. Um, understanding that, you know, you are the person who you need to compare to. And I wrote here something that um, might be like a quote. Um, so the biggest challenge ahead of you is to become the best version of yourself. Um, you know, when it comes to your work would be like your biggest challenge ahead or the biggest challenge ahead of you would be to do your best work. Um, right. And kind of stop 
stop comp competing to others actually, but actually um, start competing with yourself or start, start comparing yourself with yourself. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. How do you I see that? Like I, had, I, I had two quotes in my mind that like I, I've read somewhere. Like I have, I have a whole Pinterest board with quotes just around that that kind of topic. Like again, it's it's going exactly in what I love to do. Um, but one of them was something like, "Don't be a copy of someone else." Um, like as soon as you start to compare yourself, you're trying to be an imitation of somebody else. Like you're either a cheap imitation of somebody else, or you're the real you. And so kind of like be you like there's only one you um th there was a quote around that something uh, i don't remember the, the the whole context and the other one um oh yeah like be the best you everybody else has taken kind of like something like that um and but yeah with comparison comparison is definitely a trap because comparison all it takes you is is just lets you think that you're terrible or better like either way doesn't matter you're never indifferent when you look at somebody's work well if you're indifferent about somebody's work then you're not really interested in it but if you are like it can either tell you two things one that you're better than the person that you're looking at like the, the piece of work so you're like oh i would have done that better and so that's not a nice side to be on so that's kind of like arrogant the other side is uh, this person is so much better than I am and you kind of self-destruct here on this, that side. And so no matter on what scale you go on to, it's going to be bad for you. So it's a double loss either way. So if you imagine that being always the case, that when you look at somebody else's work, that you always will fall into one of those two categories and you will destroy yourself either way uh, because you're either destroying your reputation, like, oh, I'm too good, like, I'm better than everybody else, or you're going into the self-destruct mode, like, it's a loss-loss either way, and so the question is, why would you actually do that? It's kind of mm. like taking a paintball gun and shooting yourself in, it's like, well, of course, that's the reaction of what happens, you won't do it because it hurts, and, and that thing that you're doing through, it's kind of like, it is addictive, because you kind of look at other people and you're like, wow, this is so amazing. And I want to be able to do that too. But you realize like, hey, this is not doing me any, any good. Like, I, again, going back to the Gemma O'Brien um, uh, topic. like I will add Gemma to, well. the, to the show notes, definitely. I, I, definitely. Def definitely. <laughs> like, link her in, like, add her to your bio. I don't know. No, <laughs> she, I, like, I've met her. She's such a nice person um and and also just like so curious and interested and and that's kind of like what defines her as well as a person as an artist um but the thing is again it's finding what makes you unique hmm. and use that as your superpower like i i know i have a lot of qualities um that many of you do, maybe don't know but like just the fact that i know three languages is already a super talent of mine that a lot of other people don't have and so how do i use that in my work like all right, I'm not using that too much. And I think it was Ali Abdal, who is like a YouTuber, who said like, um, always success is defined by the work you put in, by luck that you have, and and has like a third factor. And the third factor is un, like uh, unfair advantage. Like what is your unfair advantage beyond anyone else? And so once you have that, you realize, you know what? Like look at other people's work by just trying to see like what can you pick out of that for me it's always been like my creative process looks is always in four steps first step is inspiration so you need to look at other people's work because that's kind of informing you in what direction you can go and kind of like opening up, up your eyes to find your voice in your own domain you want to go into but then two is the important part is like is dissection where you start to understand like how did they do that pick that thing apart and the third thing is creating. So you need to put that out. And then last thing is add one more step. So always adding more. And I kind of like, like to, to show the whole image by telling people like, it's kind of like you're eating something. Inspiration is what you're feeding yourself with. Your body then dissects it. And if you then like go to the toilet, you put it out again. So that's the creation part. It doesn't look fancy, but that's it. And so that you grow, you always need to take in more than you actually need. Uh, so that's kind of like you have two, 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 two kids, right? Um, 
you need to feed them so that they grow. And, and so kind of like that is the same philosophy for me for creating. Um, if you don't do one of those steps right, so for example, if you forget to inspire yourself, well, you don't have anything to put out and so you will starve yourself. Mm. But if you take in the inspiration and you put that out instantly without actually dissecting it, without pulling it apart and creating your own piece, then you're just going to reproduce like the same thing, just ter- just worse. Like imagine you're putting something in yourself like a, um, I don't know, like just a fruit, like a tomato and your body would take it through the whole stomach, but it won't actually take the nutrients apart. It won't dissect that. Then it will come out worse than it actually came in. And so that's why imitation is the worst idea ever because it won't, it will never come out the same way and it will always be crap or crappier than the thing that came in. And so that's kind of, for me, it's always been like that asking myself, all right, how can I pull it apart? But, but understand like, what are the things that my body needs so that I can like, like the vitamins, like you take a a tomato, you take out the vitamins, you take out the nutrients, you take out all these good things and you pull it apart. And when you see a good piece of work, you're like, oh, what are the colors that they use? Like, oh, these color schemes are amazing. Like, let me use that in a whole different piece. Like nothing like that person used. Like I'll go into illustration and look at like how illustrators use their colors. And suddenly, the color skin that they use, like suddenly I can apply that to my lettering. And if I go to, um, I don't know, a sculptor, like see how they sculpted pieces and how they intricately made some details, like that will help me to then inform on how I can do my piece of work even better. Well, I love that framework to find inspiration. I think we would definitely have you on another episode just to speak about that topic only. Um, but I just wrote something for, um, let me go back to that, to, for Gypsy Cat. Um, I just took a note out of what you just were saying, which is like actually comparing yourself to others takes you away from yourself, where, you know, which brings us back to the fact that many of the things we create or all, all of the things we create are rather coming, you know, coming out of ourselves rather than coming from an external um, input, right? Um, So we are going to add these quotes to, we have a lot of quotes out of this conversation. We are going to add these quotes to the show notes so that you can share them on social media. And if you want, you can also letter them. Um, So lastly, we're getting... um, on to the last part of the um, of the show. Um, this is our like better now segment where we share something we are happy about or something that has changed our lives that might help our listeners. Um, so it could be really anything, something really transcendental or something really simple. So Chef, is there something that you're currently happy about or that has made you smile lately? For me, it sounds so so stupid, but also just so easy. It doesn't sound stupid, though. Why am I saying that? Um, It's kind of like redefining success for me uh, Mm. in a new way, new light. Like, I've I've been following that whole Instagram culture of, like, growing your account, getting further and further in. Mm. And not growing now just shows me, like, hey, I'm not happy about that. Um, And so I usually found that, like... Uh, like anybody who redefines success, especially um, whenever they're not growing, like, well, that's just a lame excuse to not grow. So it's kind of been for me kind of like the, I understand that people who have grown so far and kind of like plateaued at some point and just being like, you know what? I should learn to be happy with just within. I'm like, well, cool. But you're just not putting in the time, the effort, and you don't find like what's trending anymore. But no, for me, success and it goes way beyond that. It's like how much money you're making. It's not the, the amount of money that you're making. It's not the impact that you're doing. It's not the, the thing that you're doing. Like I was thinking like, how can I do what I do right now long term? Mm-hmm. I want to have a long term approach. I, I've been admiring uh, family businesses for, for quite a while now. Um, and when you look at lo- family businesses that have a long legacy of of, of giving up their their company to the next generation. And, and whenever you uh, build up your company that way, like one of those companies is Stabilo, the pen brand. Mm. Um, it's been in family generations for over four, almost 400 years. Um, and so whenever they're producing uh, something or they're putting out something, they always think of 20 years ahead. So 
Like our company needs to survive the next 20 years because I need to give it to the next generation. How many of us artists are just focusing on the short term rather than the long term? Like I'm just、mm. focused on right now, this year, this moment, this short term. Like I want to grow super fast on Instagram. And like if you play the long term game, where it's like, hey, you know what? I want to grow just in my art, my craft. And and yesterday I was、uh, doing a talk for a conference. And and one of the things that I ended up the 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 show with or the 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 talk with was, you know what? We often have this huge image of what we want to achieve, and we usually pack it in just too short amount of time.、Um, but if we set our goals, our view on on the long term, on something that could be done in ten years, twenty years, then suddenly, like gaining a hundred thousand Instagram followers. Isn't that impossible if you spread out over ten years? Suddenly, your mind will say, "Oh, you know what? I can do that." And as soon as you start to believe that you can do that, you follow those steps more, more, like you pace yourself better. And as you grow, you learn how to do it faster, how to become better at that. And so, instead of trying to be right now the most popular person that you can possibly think of, doing all these different areas, businesses that you're like, oh, I want to be great at this. I want to be great at that. I want to be selling courses. And I see that person doing a podcast. I'm just, I'm just、um, teasing on Martina. She's doing all these things amazingly, and I'm like, how is she doing this? But for me right now, I need to think of how can I do maybe just one of those things really well and do it long term and feel like how can I do this and spread myself out over a long time and not see. Just the short term, just the now. That's why I usually fall into a slump because I'm just like focused on, oh, I'm not not where I want to be, and I'm 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 whining with myself instead of just saying like, you know what? I'm actually excited. I'm excited for Martina for what she's doing, and、uh, so I'm really happy for for all the things you're bringing to the lettering community because that is so helpful and it's helping so many people on building up their business,、uh, learning from what you have learned over the years instead of doing it all by themselves. And and also teaching them the skills to do it really really well. And so for me, it's only a win for myself as well to see somebody else doing that because if somebody pushes the lettering community forward, it helps everyone in that community because as long as people are learning about lettering, it's still going to be trending. It's still going to be growing. And so that's only beneficial for myself as well. So that's very egoistical.、Uh, um, Like I'm very egoistic in that sense, but at the same time, I'm realizing her success is my success as well, and that's why I need to also help her by succeeding in that and making sure that she has all the help that she can get, and by by supporting that community. Your success is my success as well, Steph. And it was such an honor to have you here on the podcast. So just to wrap up the episode, where can people find you? Hey, they can find me on all social platforms from TikTok. I just got verified on TikTok. I'm not、Amazing. still not verified on. I'm、Instagram, not on TikTok. <laughs> I, well, there you go. I, at least one thing that I have. No, I, I'm not actively on TikTok, but、uh, Instagram, YouTube, mostly YouTube. I'm trying to push out content on YouTube.、Um, they can send me emails, the direct messages, and also if you were interested in the inspirational parts, like the my four step creative process, I teach that in my Building Letters One on One course. Like my whole framework on how I learn to draw letters and how I am able to come up with all these different styles.、Um, that's like taught in that four step creative process. And so if you're anyone who's listening is interested in that, I have a whole course on that and teach it all. Amazing. We are gonna add this to the show notes as well, so everyone can find you.、Um, you can find me, the host of this、uh, show, on social networks at Martina Flor on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you have questions or comments,、uh, go to martinaflor.com/podcast. You can see their previous episodes, find the show notes, and send、uh, voice messages. You can also find、uh, these episodes and comment on them on my YouTube channel. You can just go to martinaflor.com/slash/youtube, and that will redirect you to the YouTube channel. So, this is it for today. If you love this episode, you you should subscribe to this podcast, and if you leave us a review,、um, it will help us.、Uh, it will help others,、uh, other peers to find us. So, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Steph, for being there, and see you in, on the next episode of Letter Now. Bye bye.